Does Trump speak differently than Biden? That sounds like a loaded question. Do presidents today speak more simply than in years past? Maybe? Which political party speaks more negatively? Oh, you're definitely gonna get us in trouble. Well, politics has become more and more polarizing, but I think there is a way we can be a bit more objective about our analysis. How? By allowing the computer to analyze presidential speeches. Can we do that? I already have. I downloaded every US presidential inaugural speech and fed it into the computer in order to analyze each speech. What could the computer do? One thing it can do is analyze what reading level each president is speaking at and group them by political party. Okay, but the computer can't tell us how positive or negative a speech is. Actually, it can. I can do sentiment analysis on each speech using a large language model. You mean we can ask the AI to tell us how positive or negative each speech is? That's right. In this video, we're gonna be looking at inaugural speeches to see which are more positive and negative. We can plot these over time, contrast political parties, analyze re-election speeches, and we can even ask the AI to tell us what it thinks are the most positive and negative parts of both Trump and Biden's inaugural speeches. But enough talk, more data! It's data time! I'm data. I downloaded 64 presidential speeches. Most are inaugural speeches. That's the first speech a president gives after being sworn into office. That's right. The exceptions were when a vice president took over after the president died. Then I had to find their first speech as president. In total, I downloaded nearly 150,000 words. The average speech is about 2,000 words long, which is about 20 minutes of speaking time. The longest speech ever given was by William Henry Harrison. His speech was over 8,000 words long. That's like three times longer than average. Exactly. The shortest speech ever given was by George Washington after his reelection. That speech was only 135 words long. Have presidential speeches gotten longer over time? Let's find out. If we plot the length of each speech over the years, we can see that there is a lot of variation. However, the overall trend is actually pretty constant. Maybe speeches were a little longer a century ago and shorter today. Next, let's look at the reading level of each speech. For this, I'm using the Fletch Kincaid grade level. What's that? The Fletch Kincaid grade level is a formula used to estimate whether someone is speaking at a middle school, high school, or college level. Basically, it's just looking at how many syllables are in each word and how many words are in each sentence. So a person who speaks in long sentences with big words would get a high grade level. For example, if I said, for those of you who are sufficiently fascinated by our video publications, please consider subscribing and enabling the bell icon below. Additionally, if you are especially satisfied with our publications and wish to support us financially, please consider joining our Patreon account so that your membership may be celebrated with the accreditations at the conclusion of our video publications. Huh? That has a grade level of 18. But instead, I could say subscribe and get the bell on. Also, if you want to support us, join our Patreon account then you'll get your name in the credits. Real subtle. There, I was speaking at a third grade reading level. So what are the reading levels of the presidents? George Washington's first inaugural speech in 1789 has the highest reading level of any speech. That speech is scored at the 27th grade reading level. 27th grade? Yeah, the formula isn't really designed for older speaking. Here is the first sentence of that speech. Fellow citizens of the Senate and of the House of Representatives, among the vicissitudes incident to life, no event could have filled me with greater anxieties than that of which the notification was transmitted by your order and received on the 14th day of the present month. Huh? Yeah, people spoke differently back then. By contrast, Joe Biden's inaugural speech in 2021 is scored at the fifth grade reading level. Wow, that's a huge difference. Oh, that's just the beginning. If we plot the reading level of every inaugural speech, we get a clear picture of how presidential speeches have changed over time. And if we plot the trend line, we can definitely see a decrease of reading level over time. Now, let's take a look at sentiment analysis. You mean the AI analysis? That's right. I fed each sentence of each speech to OpenAI and asked it to score its negativity and positivity level. I then average these results in order to get an overall negativity and positivity score for each speech. If we look at the positivity scores over the years, we see that they're pretty sporadic until the 20th century, when they tend to become more consistent. If we look at the overall trend, we see that they've become slightly more positive over time. If we look at the negativity score of each speech, we see that they are also rather sporadic, and it actually looks like they might be undulating up and down with a period of maybe 20 to 30 years. But then, around the 20th century, they 
to smooth out. The trend here is pretty consistent. Overall, the negativity scores for each speech are always much lower than the positivity scores. Is that to be expected? I'm not sure what to expect. I think I can understand that in the 20th century, speeches became more consistent since presidents were speaking directly to the people through radio and television. Why does that matter? Well, maybe their speeches needed to have a more consistent or even formulaic tone to them. The real surprise for me comes from the undulations in the 19th century. I don't know if this is a meaningful pattern or just noise from inaccuracies in the AI. Comment below if you know what's going on here. One other thing I want to see is how presidents who were re-elected changed their speaking style from their first election. What would you expect to see? Well, my speculation is that presidents who are elected for the first time give negative speeches because they have to criticize how bad things are from the previous administration before claiming that they will do better. However, if a president is re-elected, they probably want to praise themselves for how much good they did in the last four years and finish by saying that there is so much more work to be done. Is that the case? Let's find out. If we look at the presidents who were re-elected before the 20th century, we see a pretty consistent trend. The second inaugural speech is always more negative than the first. Washington, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Jackson, Lincoln, Grant, and Cleveland all had their negativity scores increase for their re-election speeches, sometimes as high as 23%. They also had similar decreases in their positivity scores. Grover Cleveland had the biggest increase in negativity, but that makes sense since he didn't serve consecutive terms. What does that mean? Grover Cleveland served one term as president, then lost re-election to Benjamin Harrison, even though he won the popular vote, then ran again and won in the next election. In fact, he's the only president to do this. If Trump wins this election, he will only be the second president ever to serve two non-consecutive terms. So why does it make sense that Cleveland's second speech would be so negative? Because he was voted out of office, then Harrison took over, then Cleveland got back into office. So his re-election speech was probably pretty negative because he wasn't happy with what Harrison had done with the country for the last four years. Oh. But what's really interesting is looking at the results from the one president who was elected more than twice. FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, was the only president to serve four terms, and his results are quite fascinating. If we look at the length of each of FDR's speeches, we can see that each one is shorter than the previous one. What is more interesting is that the reading level of each speech is also less than the previous one. Even more interesting is that if we plot the sentiment of each speech, we can see that each speech is less negative and more positive than the previous one. This is what I was expecting. Each time FDR gets re-elected, he has to keep making things sound more positive since he's been responsible for the country. Wasn't he president during World War II and the Great Depression? Yeah. If we jump ahead to more recent presidents, we see a similar trend with their speeches. Reagan, Clinton, George W. Bush, and Obama all had increases in positivity and decreases in negativity for their re-election speeches. Each re-election speech decreased in negativity as much as 7%. What's also interesting is that most of these candidates also increase the reading level of their re-election speeches. Nixon, Reagan, Clinton, George W. Bush, and Obama all had increases in the reading level of their speeches, sometimes as much as two grade levels. And these re-election statistics are true across all parties. Can you find any differences across political parties? Yes, but the results were not what I expected. If we group all presidential inaugural speeches in the last two centuries by political party, we can see if Democrats or Republicans score differently. First, let's just take a look at speech length. If we look at the shortest and longest speeches of Democrats and Republicans, we can see that Republican speeches are a bit longer. The average Democrat speech is about 1,900 words long, and the average Republican speech is nearly 2,400 words long. If we look at the reading level of both parties, we can see that they are basically the same. Both Democrats and Republicans, on average, speak at the 11th grade reading level. If we look at sentiment, again, both parties are pretty similar. Their negative sentiment averages around 16% and their positivity sentiment averages around the low 70s. Given how many different speakers we're examining over the years, I'm surprised how similar they are. So people who say one party speaks differently than the other are wrong? Well, we're just looking at inaugural speeches and we're including older speeches back when people spoke differently. So what about today? You said you'd talk about Trump and Biden. Right. Let's now take a look at the two presidents everyone came here to see. If we look at the reading level of Trump's inaugural speech versus Biden's, we see that Trump's reading level is actually a bit higher than Biden's. Trump spoke at a seventh grade reading level, while Biden spoke at a fifth grade reading level. 
Trump's reading level was higher than Biden's? Yeah, that's not what I expected. Fifth grade sounds low. It is. In fact, Biden's speech is one of the lowest ever, along with George Bush Sr., a Republican, and LBJ, another Democrat. So again, both parties have had inaugural speeches with low reading levels. What about the sentiment of Trump and Biden's speeches? Ah. That's where things get interesting. Trump had one of the most negative speeches with a negativity score of about 27%. That's about 9% higher than Biden's 18% negativity score. Is that the most negative speech ever? No, but we have to go back a ways to find a more negative one. In fact, we have to go back to 1913 to find a more negative speech than Trump's. After that, there are only a few other speeches that score more negatively than Trump's speech. However, Trump's speech is the second most negative speech that a Republican president has ever given. The most negative was Lincoln's re-election speech in 1865. What exactly was so negative about his speech? I asked the AI to give me what it thought were some of the most negative excerpts from Trump's speech. Here is what it found. But for too many of our citizens, a different reality exists. Mothers and children trapped in poverty in our inner cities, rusted out factories scattered like tombstones across the landscape of our nation. An education system flush with cash, but which leaves our young and beautiful students deprived of all knowledge and the crime and the gangs and the drugs that have stolen too many lives and robbed our country of so much unrealized potential. This is what I would expect from a new president. Call out all the problems you see from the previous administration, then finish by saying that you'll do better. Here's what the AI thinks is one of Trump's most positive excerpts. Your voice, your hopes, and your dreams will define our American destiny. And your courage and goodness and love will forever guide us along the way. Together, we will make America strong again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And yes, together, we will make America great again. Can you ask it for the most negative thing Biden said? Definitely. These are the excerpts that the AI thinks are the most negative from Biden's speech. Once in a century virus that silently stalks the country has taken as many lives in one year as America lost in all of World War Two. Millions of jobs have been lost. Hundreds of thousands of businesses closed. I understand that many of my fellow Americans view the future with fear and trepidation. I understand they worry about their jobs. A rise of political extremism, white supremacy, domestic terrorism that we must confront and we will defeat. Once again, a new president is calling out the problems he sees from the previous administration. Finally, here are Biden's most positive excerpts. This is America's day. This is democracy's day. A day of history and hope, of renewal and resolve. And I ask every American to join me in this cause. Uniting to fight the foes we face. Anger, resentment and hatred, extremism lawlessness, violence, disease, joblessness, and hopelessness. We've learned again that democracy is precious. Democracy is fragile. And at this hour, my friends, democracy has prevailed. So who's better? Look, I leave it to all of you to decide for yourselves what you think. I'm just trying to share the data that I've discovered. But what can we learn from this data? Well, the one thing I think we can take away from all this is that it's important to analyze the data from all directions. Sometimes the data can surprise you and your expectations in ways you never anticipated.